When I was trying to get in shape 10 years ago, I was working out at home every day doing push-ups and crunches. The problem was that that was all that I was doing, just push-ups and crunches. I started to develop muscles in a weird way. <laughs> these proportions were horrible because I was training only these few muscle groups. I remember kids in school were like, dude, why is only your front side growing? They would make fun of me because I had no back muscles. So I said to myself, all right, let's figure it out. I started watching YouTube videos of the gym workouts and slowly putting together all the pieces of the puzzle. The reason why I'm telling you all this is because I know how frustrating it can be as a beginner to figure it all out. There's diet, bulking, cutting, training. It can take a while until things don't start to click. That's why I'm gonna give you step-by-step -step plan on what to do and how to get started as a beginner. My name is Coach Miloš and welcome to my new video. The first thing beginners usually ask themselves is should I bulk or cut? It's very simple. If you're fat, you should cut. If you're way too skinny, you should probably bulk. Now, some of you might be like, what if I'm skinny fat? Well, then you should also cut because skinny fat is still fat. You don't want to gain more fat if you're already fat. Although what you can do is lose fat and build muscle at the same time. It's called body recomposition. You're basically using your body fat as a source of energy required to build muscle. Especially if you're a beginner, you have something called newbie gains. You start putting on muscle like crazy when you're just getting started. Okay, so how do you do that? You step on the scale every day and you write down your weight. If you're bulking and the weight is not going up, then you should eat more. How much? Until you're gaining about one pound a month or slightly less than that. If you're gaining more, then you're gaining too much fat. You gotta eat less. If you're gonna cut, depends how much you have to lose. For example, if you have to lose over 200 pounds, you can go and lose 10 to 15 pounds a month. No problem. If you have like 20 pounds to lose, I would slow it down a little bit and go for one to two pounds a week, depending on how you feel. If you're going for the recomposition, then you shouldn't lose more than one pound a week. Gotta slow it down, otherwise you won't be able to build muscle. In some cases, I had clients that were not losing weight at all. The numbers on the scale are not changing because they're gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time. Like, their body is changing, but their weight is not. So in this case, you have to rely on visual feedback. You can take progress pictures and compare them on the monthly basis and see if your body is changing or not. Okay, so now that you know whether you should bulk or cut and how to do that, the next step is to figure out what type of food you should be eating. First thing is at least three protein meals per day, ideally five. Generally, it's a good idea to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you have 200 pounds, you can eat 200 grams of protein. Some of the great sources of protein are eggs, chicken, but you can eat any type of meat, really. Fish, especially white fish if you're trying to lose weight because it's low in calories. Low-fat cheese or other types of low-fat dairy products like like Greek yogurt or something like that. Uh, you can use protein powder as a supplement if you're having hard times eating enough of the protein meals. Besides that, it's important to eat both carbs and healthy fats. And don't be afraid of carbs if you're trying to lose weight. Low carb diets will take so much away from your physique. Your muscles would look less full because there's less water and glycogen in your body. Glycogen is a substance deposited in your muscles as the store of carbohydrates. So that's why your muscles shrink down when you don't eat carbs. Good sources of carbs are fruits and vegetables. 
pasta, rice, bread, stuff like that. And regarding healthy fats, nuts, dairy products, meats, olive oil, but I would be very careful with that one, especially if you're trying to lose weight. It's very easy to add way too many calories by using too much oil. So basically lots of whole foods, healthy stuff in general, start developing good eating habits, look for some calorie friendly protein recipes that will allow you to eat delicious stuff without sacrificing joy in your diet. If you're having hard time gaining weight, eat more stuff high in calories like nuts, meats with high amounts of fat or high fat dairy products. Fat has a lot of calories. That's why it's a good idea to lower your fat intake if you're having a hard time losing weight. Okay, so now that you know how much to eat and what to eat, it's time to talk about training. Technique. Learn biomechanics. Many advanced athletes haven't done their homework when they were beginners, so they start developing problems as they start lifting heavier weights. Also, there's the problem with the ego. Try approaching someone who trained over 10 years and telling him, Sir, your form is incorrect. <laughs> See what happens. It's very hard to go back from benching two plates with a horrible technique to benching one plate with great form. Ego is hell of a thing, which is why you want to set good foundations from the very beginning. There are six compound lifts to master as a beginner. Bench press, military press, rows, pull-ups or pull-downs, squats and deadlifts. If you don't get these right, you will develop problems as you progress to the more advanced levels. Find a coach or someone to teach you this stuff if you can. If you can't, well, it is what it is. Learn from the internet. Record yourself or look in the mirror while you do it. Concentrate on the technique. Practice with lighter weights so you don't get hurt. And listen, you're gonna make gains. Just practicing your technique with lighter weights is sufficient enough to create stimulus for the undertrained individual. Besides the six exercises that I have mentioned, you can also add some biceps curls. You can do side lateral raises for your medial delts. You can also do calf raises, both in seated and standing position, and you can do a little bit of neck training. And finally, you can change angles on the bench press and just do the incline press or something so that you can target the upper chest. That's 10 exercises that I mentioned. You don't need anything else. Just do that. Keep it simple. Keep it basic. Forget about the BS that you see on TikTok. Just stay consistent with these and I promise you will get very far. Now that you know what to eat and how much to eat, you know what to do in the gym, let's talk about how much. You need some sort of training split. I noticed that beginners tend to like push-pull legs. Notice how six basic lifts that I mentioned have horizontal and vertical push, horizontal and vertical pull, and they're training both sides of your legs with squats and deadlifts. That's enough to make a good push-pull leg training split. The problem is that you would have to be training six days a week. Even I don't train that often. You can organize it any way you like, as long as you're hitting each muscle group twice a week with the total of 10 sets. I know this could be too complicated, so I'm just gonna give you good training split here on the screen. You can take a screenshot and save it for later. Feel free to subscribe and if you wanna continue watching, here's another video that will put you in the right mindset so that you can make sure not to lose consistency as you start devoting yourself to all these new habits as a beginner. See you there, bye bye.